I want to welcome you guys to the year, Gavin, Marco, Arthur, and myself. Uh, what we're going to do is start off with the blessings of the Torah for the morning, which we do before we uh, learn about the written in the Oral Torah. Uh, Baruch Ata Adonai Elohini Melech Haolam Asher Kedishan V'Mitzvot HaVetzivanu Lasuk B'Divrei Torah. Barev Na Adonai Elohinu Et Divrei Torah Ka B'Fini Ufi Emcha Beit Yisrael V'Niye Nachnu V'Tzei Tzeinu V'Tzei Tzei Emcha Beit Yisrael Kulani Yudei Shemecha V'Limdei Torah Techa Lishma Baruch Ata Adonam Lomei Torah Lemo Yisrael Amen Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Asher B'Chabanu Mikol Amin B'Natan Lanu Torah To Baruch Ata Adonai Noteinu Torah Amen Bless not you Adonai God King of the Universe Who has sanctified us with His commandments and has commanded us to gross ourselves in the words of Torah. Please, Adonai, God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouth, in the mouth of your people, the family of Israel. May we and our offspring and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, all of us, know your name and study your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, Adonai, teach us Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, God, King of the universe, who selected us from all the peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen. 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 Um, all right, guys, so what, what are we going to do now? We dealt with the principle yesterday of Tsaurus, Tsaurus, and uh, now we're going to deal with the principle of how Shmuel and Rav determine Shane and Marvin. It's going back to that principle. The reason why it came to deal with this case of Rego is it didn't want to get complicated with the case of uh, Mave just yet. It wanted to deal with where they were, there was that ex, um, exception with Rav Papa. Okay? So, um, firstly, the case of Mave is referring, if you remember, to a living thing. It says the yeah. ox is not like the uh, Mave and the Mave is not like the <clears> ox. <throat> and it said both the Mave and the ox are living unlike the fire. Because Arthur came the other day and asked, or does it matter if it's living or not, if the person spit land? And um, uh, that's why he asked that question. So I see Arthur did do his homework. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mention what is the scriptural verse that um, Rav says with refers to uh, man. Because again, according to Rav's view, Mave refers to man. And according to Shmuel's view, Mave refers to guys. Shame. Tooth. Shame. Shame. Shame, tooth. Shame. Exactly, Gavin tooth, and yeah. Michael. That's correct. So what we're going to do is look at the source of Rav because everybody needs a scriptural source apart from Roger. So what we find is we find a case in Isaiah um, 21, colon 12. Now, I had a look at it in Safari. It's not totally filled in properly, but I just want to give you a little bit of a background. The prophet... Uh, Isaiah speaks of, metaphorically of the coming redemption of Israel. So he refers to God as the watchman. And he says, he, and God refer, proclaims to the Jewish people redemption, uh, approaches for the righteous as does punishment for the wicked. If you seek forgiveness, seek and repent. So according to Rashi's definition, redemption means mourning. We always uh, say uh, when we refer to not, that night is a time of punishment. You'll know that for, it says, for Emunato, remember in part of the Maori of Davni, um, uh, for Emunato, you need a Muna. And why would you need a Muna? Because it's a time of trial and tribulation and punishment. And why is it akin to the night? Well, very simply, at, at night, when things are very dark, you make two mistakes. Okay. You can either not see that there's an obstruction there, and just like you wouldn't see if there's a physical obstruction, you wouldn't see if there's a spiritual obstruction. And sometimes what you do is you can't quite recognize an obstruction. In other words, there's a mitzvah to do tzitzit during the day because you can discern the color of the dechelet, it says in Gemara Brochus. So at night, you're not quite sure what, even if you can see the object, what it means. And if you think about it, when we sin, what we do is we think at the time, many times, it's not so bad, it's right, you know. Thing. The circumstances stress us. And what's the bottom line of when we sin? There's a, that we're overtaken by a state of madness. Like when we shout at people or, or we get irritated with people, we can't cope with the stress. And that sort of error in judgment 
is because we can't discern right from wrong. After Adam and Rishon did the sin, uh, evil was part of his nature. It wasn't external to him. So that the clarity and presence of mind needed, even when you can tell in a sane moment what's right from wrong, you can't tell when you're in a state of stress. And that's why punishment is referred to the night, because you can't discern good from bad. Again, why are we punished? We punish because we make sense. So therefore, um, in Judaic terms, punishment is always referred to um, allegorically as the night, and redemption as the morning. Why? If you have a look in Bereshit, uh, and you look at the, some of the Midrashim, um, it says Adam Arishon, when, he was te- when it became dark, he was terrified. Do you remember he sinned just before Shabbat came in? I don't know if you rem- uh, remember. And then what happened is it became dark. He never knew that it would end up becoming light again the next morning because he never had any experience. It was the first day he was created as an adult man. And what happens is uh, if you don't know that there's going to be a dawn, literally, and you're in darkness, not only are you literally uh, in fright, but metaphorically, if you don't know that tomorrow is going to be better than today, that's indicative of depression. You know, people commit suicide in part because they think, it's a permanent problem and they keep repeating the same patterns all the time and they'll never get out of their situation. And there is no hope for the future. That's where depression does set in. So when it refers to uh, redemption, redemption is always a morning activity. And how the Jewish view is compared to the non-Jewish view is as follows. Is that when does a Jewish day start? In Shabbat, for example. It starts in sunset and it ends the next uh, day at the end of the day. Because we always believe that the darkness and difficulty start for first, and Hashem's redemption in terms of the messianic age and solutions for us. Remember when Hashem ever creates a poison, he always creates the cure first. Because he gives us yeah. the mechanism to have the redemption. So that's what Rashi is actually talking about. And when it talks about in Isaiah twenty one twelve, and the prophet metaphorically speaks of the coming redemption. It says the term, if you seek forgiveness, seek and repent. Okay, so let me just read it to you uh, exactly. It says the watchman, meaning Hashem, morning comes and also night. If you seek, seek, be ayu. So in this verse, be ayu means seek. And that's why Rav refers to Maves, the seeker, I, um, meaning man. And the reason why is that animals are capable of a certain level of seeking. What do we say? They can forage for food. They can seek shelter. But this is purely physical. If you're seeking redemption, both spiritual and psychological, the only one that's capable of doing that level of um, transcendent redemption, or or should we say lateral thinking, is mankind. And that's why Rav refers to man as uh, the seeker. So when Biyayu refers to seek, uh, if you seek, seek. It means the seeker, meaning mankind. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Good, good, good. Arthur, it makes sense to you? Yes, it makes sense to me. Okay, good. All right. Now, obviously, um, Shmuel has a source. Now, what is his source? His source comes from... Uh, um, Avadia. Avadia was actually um, um, one, one of the uh, uh, prophets and commentaries, and Avadia actually converted. He was a convert, and he was an incredible, incredible man. Just to give you an example of, of uh, some of his predictions, he was the one that said um, that um, Yishmael will find a, like, almost like a, a product that the whole world will need him for and like bend to his knees, but it's going to happen in the future. Meaning he was talking about oil. Uh, Rav, uh, King Ken Spiro brings in his book, some of the predictions that Avadia brings. And he describes, he descri- I don't know how he describes it, but when he gives this whole description, you can see he's talking purely about oil. And they'll say there's no resources except for this one sort of liquidy resource that's uh, dark and we don't have the mechanism of using it now, but there will be a time when there's that mechanism and the whole world will need it. 
I mean, if that's not, if that doesn't send chills down your spine, I don't know what does. You're talking about uh, thousands of years ago. That is scary. And it was very specific. So it's quite something. So in Avadia 1.6, it just, uh, the verse actually speaks about the future destruction of Edom. Now, where do, what is Edom? Edom is Rome. Okay. Edom literally uh, is blood. We learned in Doi, for example, um, uh, that he's referred to as a son of Edom. You remember, Gav? Yeah. Uh, or that he's from Edom, the Edomite. The Edomite, not a son from Edom, because he was comfortable among Edomites. He, he also mimicked their nature in terms of its character, etc. It's not a compliment. Let's put it that way. Uh, because he lost his Ulamaba. But Asa was the derivative of Edom. Again, there's always been uh, from Parsha Noah, the schism between the brothers. You had your fate, and your fate was uh, became Yavan, Greece, and Yavan became Edom. And how it got through the ages is you had Yaakov, which is Israel, um, which was um, um, which developed, and there was always this conflict between the brothers because they were completely opposite in value system. So where it says when Yaakov is up, Esav is down. When Esav is up, uh, Yaakov is down. So Esav became Rome. It started off as Yafet, Greece, and then it became, uh, uh, sorry, Yafet became Esav, and Esav became Yavan, which was Greece, and then it became Rome, especially in terms of ideology. So when Avadia talks about the destruction um, of Edom, at the, obviously towards the time of the Mashiach, it comes across and it says the follows. How Asaph has been ransacked, his hidden things sought out. Neviu. So we say, to, we say, the Gemara is saying, what indication is there that this verse is connecting the word Mave with shame? So if you want to translate it, now let me tell you who Rav Yosef is. Rav Yosef was the foremost translator of Aramaic. So if I say to you, how Esau has been ransacked, his hidden things revealed, um, sought out. If I say to you, I'll give you an example. If I say I'm seeking out the mole in this company that's selling our secrets to the competition. When I find him, I describe him as what? I've exposed him. I've just exposed the mole in the company that I sought out. Does that make sense? And the, and the Aramaic word for Naviu actually means exposed. So what is a hidden thing exposed? How Asaph has been ransacked is hidden things exposed. Do you remember we learned, Shmuel learned, that what is a tooth? A tooth is alternatively covered and exposed as it eats. That's how he mm. derived shame. Do you remember we learned that before? Mm. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Gav, uh, Arthur, you fine with it? Yes, yes? Yes, yeah. I'm fine with it. Okay. So, um, so that's how he gets teeth. Um, now, what, 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 is, what are the issues that they have with each other? So, Rav, so why did Rav not say a Shmuel? What weakness did Rav see in Shmuel's interpretation? So there are two weaknesses. The first one is that Nive, uh, which actually means, uh, as we said, um, uh, sought out or exposed. It's a problem because he said, what does that have to do with Marva? Your, your logic is a little bit abstract. It's not literal. You know, you can say the tooth, yes, an animal's tooth is alternatively covered and exposed as it eats, but it's a little bit of a stretch to me. That's what... That's the, uh, uh, that's the weakness that he perceived. So Shmuel now has got some sort of weakness that he perceived in Rav's argument. Okay? And what did he see as the weakness in his argument? So before we do that, I need to tell you that there are two weaknesses that Rav saw in Shmuel's argument. The first one is it was abstract with regards to a tooth being exposed and hidden as an animal uh, eats. But he said that the problem is with the actual word itself, and the Gemara brings this, is that if you have a look at the word exposed, the exposed is actually in the causative word. 
What I mean, uh, what I mean in a causative word is that it actually, it's, he said, I can understand if you refer to the tooth as the exposed one. But what he's saying is in the active form, this is referred to as the exposure, the action to the doer, and this can't refer to tooth. In other words, um, if, I, if I'm the exposer and I expose a political scandal, this is not the one being exposed. It's not the tooth that's being exposed by the lips that alternatively are going up and down in order to, to show the teeth. And expose is the one doing the exposing. So that would refer to the lips. It's exposing the teeth and it's not exposing the teeth. So that was the other flaw. He said the word is incorrect. The word using that you're using is the active uh, meaning of the word. The exposed one, in, uh, I could understand because that's meaning tooth. But your word is the doing word, the active word meaning the exposer. And that's brought by Rashi. So those were the two issues. So then what did Shmuel say? According to Rav, what flaw did he say in the argument? He said, well, fine, I can say the same thing to you. You referring to boe, meaning seeker. Man shall seek redemption, etc. And I hear that it's not a literal seeker. Uh, and, and it's about, uh, you know, uh, seeking the, um, the, the higher levels. But you're using the causative form, meaning something that is sought out. So if you are seeking our treasure, treasure is not alive. Do you remember we said Mave has to be living? Uh -huh. So whether it's a tooth on a living creature or a mankind, these are both living. They breathe. They're known as uh, breath of life. They're body parts or components. Remember mucus coming from man. That's coming from a living animal. So uh, Shmuel says to him, right, I don't understand. When, you say, when you're using the causative form uh, for Boe, what you're actually saying is the, uh, is the, is the actual thing that's sought out. It's, it's the causative. So you can seek our treasure. It doesn't mean it has to be living. If you're saying you're the seeker, you're searching, fine, I hear where you're coming from. But the term you're using, in other words, the term, not you, the term that you're bringing from Azar 21.12 refers to sort seeking out, meaning you're seeking out redemption. So I don't agree with your interpretation. So the reason that Rav does not hold by Shmuel and Shmuel does not hold by Rav is there's a flaw in both of their sources. Does that make sense? According to yeah. the other. Okay, any questions uh, so far, guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, what you're saying is very deep stuff. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, I get the gist of where this is all going. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, the, the law, always the last part where you talk about, you know, the central argument between, I mean, they're both, they're both, uh, referring to, um, they're, they're both, I mean, they're both referring to, to something that's living, whether it's, whether it's man or animal, um, you know, they're referring to, they're referring to damages that are, that are caused by, um, by, um, by, but, you know, I mean, metaphor, you know, allegorically, you know, talking about the lips as, 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 like you know, you know. I, again, I'm just sorry. I'm just speaking my thoughts out here. Uh, okay. I, I'm not I'm quite getting to I'm the. Trying, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying. Well, to I'm trying to as well. Uh, I'm always. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to get the gist of the question. Uh, I mean, I understand. I understand. I understand. I mean, they both. You, you started talking about Edom. You started speaking about you know the redemption. You started speaking about all this kind of stuff that's related. I to can. This. I can unpack it in uh, two or three simple sentences. No, no, no. Sorry? If, if you'd like, what I thought would be helpful now, according to what Mark was saying, it makes sense, is that I just, you know, we went into a lot of detail, but I'm just going to give you a two-sentence yeah. two summary. The reason I have to go into de details, I can't give you a two-sentence summary if it doesn't make sense. So what we're trying to do here is the mission has started off is the ox is not like the mave and the mave is not the, like the ox. And the ox and the mave yeah. that are both living are not like the fire, which is not yeah. living. 
And the Mishnah wants to bring out that living is defined as uh, something that it has breath. You know, fire yes. might look living in that it's animated and it moves, which is why afterwards it says the mave and the ox of the fire move, unlike the pit that's stationary. But the definition of yeah. mave and ox is that yeah. they're living things. So Shmuel's yeah. view is that it's fine. The yeah. damage we're talking here is shine, which is uh, living, because any body part that's of a living creature is considered living. In that it's part of the living, let's put it that way. And according to Rab, a person's yeah. A, a person's mucus is yes. part of that living thing, just like a tooth is an anatomy just of like a living thing. Exactly, yes. exactly. So okay. if you understand the Mishnah, because it was a way while ago we did the Mishnah, it just helps put yeah. it in context. The second sentence I just want to say, summary, is that we need scriptural sourcing as evidence. In other words, everybody can come up with wonderful logical arguments. And nobody is better at logic than Rav and Shmuel. These guys were, uh, yeah. were big. Um, they were, they were outmaneuver us uh, and a whole team of people sec with seconds in their head. Um, yeah. But, but I, the thing of it is they need a scriptural source first. And that's what, what we're coming the, to bring. Okay. Yeah? So, but what was the last part? What is, the, what is the essential difference between what they're arguing about now? Okay. So, so, so you know... Uh, you know, what, where, where, where's, the, where, where, where's the nuance of the, the difference in looking at this? Okay. So, um, so obvi obviously, Rubs brings a case in his R21.12 where he brings his proof uh, in his, uh, for Rav being man. And then in, uh, in Ovadia, 1.6, uh, 1. is where Shmuel brings his proof um, that shame means to, uh, that Marve yes. means shame too. That Marve yes. means shame. Yes. And and each of them is bringing their particular proof, and each one can see a, a flaw in the other. They're both saying, firstly, it doesn't literally say Marve. You're bringing a extrapolated concept yes. that the seeker means man, and that the truth actually means. Uh, uh, the shame because you're showing something that's exposed and not. Yes. So on a on a on a one on on, on a one uh, level, that's their yes. flaw, and then uh, basically the other flaw that they've got is they've got a flaw with the way they're using the word. So for example, I think we've got two minutes left. So let me finish this one point. Is that uh, uh, Shmuel is saying that you can't use the word saying the seeker because. Um, the actual word that it's using in your source means sought out, and sought out could be non-living, like uh, like gold, for example. And we yeah. talk about living things. Okay. And then, and, and yes. alternatively, Ralph's issue with Shmuel is something else. He's saying yes, and your thing, uh, hidden and exposed, is about the exposure, not what is exposed. The truth is exposed. The exposure is actually. Uh, could refer to, in fact, man, which is a person. A man can expose another man to lie. So yeah. you know, it's not, you know, either one's got flaws in each other's scriptural log, uh, scriptural sourcing here, and the logic of it. And yeah. uh, it's on this basis that the bone of contention is. So the Gemara reasserts itself, and it says, um, because this verse does not fit precisely with the exposition of this master or that master. What yeah. is Rav and Shmuel actually saying? What's their logical arguments now? And it's going to go into it next session. Okay. Okay, good. Dan, you've still got five minutes, by the way. Is, is, is there anybody else that's got an opinion? Because neither one actually, both of them have flaws. Now, what does Rashi say? You did say something. What did Rashi say? So, listen, you must realize that Russian and Tosfot don't come with their own opinions to crit, uh, criticize the talent. They come to explain. And exactly as I said, the flaw that Rashi said with regards to the word, the exposed one, uh, which, could, which should refer to tooth, because it's exposed when the animal eats, is actually, the, the Mishnah says, it's an active form which relates to exposure, meaning uh, it can't refer to a tooth. Because it's the one that exposed it. 
exposes others. It's not the one that is exposed. That's what Rashi brings, as I've just said. And also, Gav, in terms of uh, the seek and the seeker being something that's sought out, that's what also some of the commentaries uh, bring. So, so what it's doing here is it's bringing uh, that these are the only two cases and there are flaws in both, and we're going to see the logic in both. So nobody's uh, perfect. They've got strengths in their arguments and weaknesses, like any what, argument throughout history. Correct. But, uh, sorry, you said what Rashi said about uh, uh, um, uh, Shaul's argument. What did he say about uh, um, a Rab's argument? What did he say? So, is, it, is, it, is it the... Um, no, is so it what he said... Or the one being sought. What did Rashi say? On no, that I'm, one? Say, I'm, I'm saying it's, uh, it doesn't bring specifically from Rashi, but the Gemara itself brings that the flaw in the argument is the fact that if something is sought, like you see a seek over, you search over gold. Uh, if you if it's sought after, it doesn't mean it's mave, it's living. It doesn't mean it's living. So is there, no one, the that's, uh, is there no one Where's, that's taking the side of 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 Rav on this? No, I think you're missing something because they're showing flaws in both arguments. It's not no, that the of taking sides. It's not about that. It's about showing the strengths of both and the weaknesses of both. Rashi doesn't take a side. Torswell okay. doesn't take a side. What they come to do, and it's a good question, is they come to explain each of the sides and they come to explain what the other side doesn't like about the other side. They don't ever take sides. They can't. They're not annoying. Mm. They yeah, can't. Okay. What they do no, is no. that. I get that. I get that. All right. Thank you. Pleasure. But listen, it's a good point because uh, they, they both see, as Gavin said, there are flaws in both and there's strengths in both. Um, and then also the logical arguments next t session will have strengths in both and weaknesses in both. Uh, and the, the, the trick of the Gemara, I remember once telling Gavin, is that you've got to try and see it from both points of view because we naturally always are inclined to think, well, that side makes sense to me and not the other side. And, and the strength of learning is to try, to try and put yourself in the other side because unless you see the other side's point of view, you're never going to grow. You're always going to have the same opinion yesterday as tomorrow. The same people that are Democrats will watch Democratic News tomorrow and the same people that are Republicans will watch Republican uh, News tomorrow. They never watch both sides of the news. And in fact, with the internet, now when you're getting articles and it works on your algorithms and search history, it's regurgitating in an echo chamber your same beliefs over and over again. That's not a point of growth. The point of growth yeah. is to say, this doesn't make sense to me. Why does he say this? And how do I see it from his point of view also? Because that is mind expansion. It's heart yeah. expansion. And, and, and that's the tough part of the Gemara, is seeing it from every point of view. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, actually I would side with Rav because because of the fact that we've already dealt with Shane, even uh, excluding their even if you don't look at their arguments, just just be just by the mere fact we've covered Shane, this has to be man. You know, you can't put something else in chain. I'm just saying that's you my can. own personal. You can find out afterwards the logical arguments of uh, Shmuel and you can say it makes absolute sense. Uh, and the reason being is that there are quite a few to know him that defend Shmuel, by the way. All right. um, and we haven't looked at the logical arguments. And that's the whole point. Is that this has got to stretch you. Because you can't make that conclusion now. You've got to hear the logical arguments. No, no, I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm favoring the one. I, I know, be. you're biased at be. the moment. You can't I, be. I'm biased. I am biased. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you have to extricate yourself uh, having favorites. You're not dating him. You're not... Okay. <laughs> No, you got no. you got to remain um, what are you impartial. No, uh, it's it's, it's going to stretch you. You know what I'm saying. I will say my biases. I look at one side that makes sense to me. The other is completely foreign to me. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But it's not. It's not easy. This. So listen, guys. That's have great. a wonderful yeah. Shabbat.